If there's something terribly wrong with you, typically this is characterized by one or more symptoms. Having a heart attack? Sometimes characterized by shortness of breath and a numb arm. Sleep deprivation? Headaches or even hallucinations. Now you might be sitting there thinking, best guest, am I hallucinating? Why does your Fallout New Vegas video look so whack? Am I having a st- do I- am, am I suffering from encephalitis? No, what you're seeing is real. And it's how I know there's something terribly wrong with me, because the other day I woke up and decided to do this challenge, characterized by a deep, unimaginable pain. It was interesting when I did this challenge in Skyrim and Fallout 4 because the games appear to have rules tied to the player scale, such as player speed, reduced or increased melee damage in the case of Skyrim, and Fallout New Vegas is similar. There is absolutely no melee damage beyond a certain threshold, with characters simply staring at you as you slash their toes, and the terrain will interact with you in obstructive and infuriating ways. Bethesda. The rules for this challenge are simple. Every time we take a sip from our trusty Vault 13 canteen, we shrink by 10% of our default player scale. And beyond 10%, we will halve our size to 5 and 2.5% until we can no longer move, then remain one level above that. And every 500 caps we gain, we grow 10% of our default player scale. And no, we cannot sell our Vault 13 canteen. An obvious side note, but I'll mention it anyway. And not because Todd Howard is standing behind me with a blood-stained limited edition PlayStation 3 Skyrim Metal Case box set. We will not be duping items for easy caps. Now, at the time of character creation, I thought I'd be making an extension of my body and soul within New Vegas, with which to exert my indomitable will on this game world, held together by thoughts and prayers and the promise of paid bonuses should it receive a Metacritic average rating of 85. But what I didn't know is I would be making a conduit by which the entire planet's negative energy reserve would blast directly into my psyche without relent and I wasn't even wearing my blue tourmaline necklace with plus three to magic defense. Thusly the bongler is born, with a perfectly vertical mohawk and goatee for a perfectly vertically challenged and or gifted man. I put all of my attribute points into luck and there's a really good reason for this, you'll see that later. I put all of my skill points into speech, lockpicking, and guns. I choose the skill trait for the plus 5 bonus to every skill at the cost of permanent 10% penalty to XP. Because I figured this run is going to be a race against time. My second trait is hoarder so that I can carry just a bit more extra loot to sell if I ever need those extra caps. I take this time to go through all of Doc Mitchell's stuff to sell later, then we head out. You should talk to Sunny Smiles before- And you should have cured my shrinking problem. Once outside, we are flashbanged by the DLC like their pop-ups on your grandma's laptop. And we have to quickly make an important decision. You see, we start on the west side of the map, and there's a road straight north direct to Vegas, meaning we can skip a fair portion of the start of the game if we simply take that road. However, the road is also highly populated by death claws, which run faster and can kill us probably instantly. In this moment, I have a premonition whereby I start running this way, end up taking a sip, shrinking, running a little bit slower, and then getting caught in like a save game soft lock. So I make the executive decision of taking the safer south route past the mountains, which will take more time but potentially save more time, and make an effort to loot things along the way with the intent of selling what I loot at checkpoints in Prim, The Border, and Novak. I make it five minutes south where I blow up a lizard with a grenade launcher and it happens. The shrink cometh. The thirst unrelenting. I figure I'll spend a couple minutes in Prim clearing some bandits and getting some XP and loot so that I'm not shrinking too rapidly. <laughs> I sell what I have to Johnson Nash. I do not have enough to hit the growth threshold, which is fine. I'll remain 5 foot 11 for just a little while longer. I head into the Bison Steve Hotel. I greet my favorite bandit. I clear the bandits with my grenade launcher. The DLC pop-ups dropped in my inventory when I woke up in the doc's office and loot all I can. You like that? I find my boy Deputy Beagle. I should rush, but I'm caught in his gaze and I cannot stop watching, cannot stop looking into his eyes. There's something about the way he looks at me that gives me a profound feeling. I shrink again. I cope by listening to the Deputy's sweet, the sweet voice. Here here to serve, serve and protect. protect. Oh, oh my. I think I've been spotted. <laughs> Oh my, I've been spotted. Please comment, this is followed by most unusual, and continue the entire transcript word for word in a one single comment chain. Do it for Gollum Beagle. I decide to make up time by crossing the desert to the checkpoint at the California border where I can sell more things. Surely it's not that far away, so I convince myself I'm probably not going to panic just yet. I am a god. I put my points into guns, explosives, speech. I love men. I shrink again. At 70% of my usual size, I fight off some rad scorpions. I'm only a small boy, please have mercy. Ah. Yeah, that's it. Who's scared now, man? Yeah. 
Yeah, run away. Oh my god. It scared the shit out of me. Always use always use sunscreen. Yeah, we're we're finally here. We just we ha oh good day, ma'am. I'm here to let me let me just get up here. I'm I'm here to sell you some junk. All right, back to scale point seven, which is what we would were at when we walked in the door. I exist to suffer. Life is meaningless. Let's go. Look, I knew this was going to hurt. I knew taking the long way was going to result in more time spent walking around, and therefore more time spent taking sips from my trusty Vault 13 canteen, which means more time shrinking. But what I definitely not considered was the absolute prolapse New Vegas was going to give me going from here to here. There were some enemies for the bongler to bongle. <laughs> including Oliver Swanwick, who upon seeing him jubilant at his circumstances made me incredibly angry at my own, so I blew him up out of spite. But just this short trip here resulted in us going from 70% scale all the way down to 40, which, interestingly enough, results in some really weird behaviors. Like this bandit who puts his gun away so that he can walk up to the small action figure running through the wilds in curious investigation. For science, probably. Not to be. At 40%, we can no longer see our pit boy bring up the menu, meaning we have no way of switching weapons and checking our inventory outside of visiting vendors, which are still some distance away. By Ranger Station Charlie, we're at 20%, and we no longer stand on the floor properly. The very laws of physics are being broken by none other than the bongler, and his insatiable thirst for little poots of water from his canteen. By the start of Novak, we are 10% of our normal play scale, and at 10%, our weapons are no longer rendered properly on the screen. By this point, we are truly, probably, Less than 5 foot 11. By the time I get to the Dinobite gift shop, I'm at 5%. And Boone kicks me down the stairs, which legitimately adds 10 seconds to my travel time. Words cannot adequately express the level of turmoil deep in my bones as we are unable to pass 2,000 caps selling things to Cliff. I attempt to perform the popular bug whereby we save, do damage to the shopkeep, then quick load to reset their inventory and refill the coffers. But this does not work. One, because VATS does not land. It only craters the ground beneath my feet. And two, it just doesn't work when we do damage and reload full stop. Now, with the absolute melting down of reality within Todd Howard's least favorite Fallout game, I began to notice a shop's inventory chest down below. I did attempt to access this for some loot, but even if I could quickly grab it in the time between sitting in this chair and falling through the world, it would not have any caps in it because I'd already cleared them out. So I walk for two and a half real minutes out of the shop. I am now at 0.25 player scale, the lowest we seem to be able to go while still being able to move. I know this because five real minutes later, I get to the Dino D Light office and need to shrink again while attempting to rob them of the riches, which turns out to only be a handful of caps. For those of you that are unfamiliar with New Vegas, this five minute journey is literally from here to here. Do you see what I'm dealing with now? Now look, I know some of you probably think I'm already not sane. I, I read the comments. But I wasn't about to travel the map by moving at only a fraction of the speed and only when I jump. So I consider play scale 0.25 or 2.5% of our usual size to be the absolute shrink floor. And I set out to continue my journey north to Vegas. I attempt to shortcut my way onto the road by running through the Dynabite gift shop and getting on the balcony. I converse with Manny. Not because you need to in New Vegas to progress the quest but because I want to. You see, on? from robbing the safe to walking here cost me nine real world minutes, and I can feel the judgment as my ancient ancestors who died for the freedoms we enjoy watch me squander this freedom by being a little man in a video game. And the existential dread this imparts in me had me feeling obligated to do actually some things, any things with this time, such as converse with, with Manny, I guess. My ancestors bled for this. My ancestors died for this. I then jump over the balcony into the street below in order to save the time I would otherwise spend walking around, but I get caught in the dino's teeth like some kind of disappointingly fibrous snack, like, like gas station Jack Link's meat jerky. And this dino doesn't even floss. So I have to walk through, out, and around, which I should have done in the first place, and it's hitting me hard that this entire detour from the initial visit to the dino bite has cost me a whopping 40 minutes. So I run. I run as fast as I can. Sometimes I get caught on the road terrain. Why does Mr. House not maintain the, the local municipal services with his immense casino taxing wealth? Is he stupid? I am nearly at the junkyard outside Novak. You'll notice it is now daytime again. Yes, yes, you see. This is because it's been 20 minutes. 20 minutes to get from over there to over here. Life from down here really does give you some perspective. Doggy. 
I sell things to old lady junk fiend. I lament at my misfortune as I spot the dino we spent 28 minutes traveling from just a short distance away. By sundown, I am at Helios 1. I am attacked by some bandits and the one bandit just blows up his mates. He seems like a cool guy. He then figures out that he can defeat me by simply jogging away from me and I, I can now do nothing. I make it to the outskirts of Boulder City. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that's what you get. Yeah. And I run out of ammo while trying to defend myself from rad scorpions. Seeing as I am too small to use my pit boy anymore, I can only go by using my favorites menu. And I do have a stick of dynamite down to favorites. Sadly, this leaves me with a melee weapon, which scales to do absolutely zero damage at the size, which also doesn't appear to be a huge deal considering the rad scorpion can't seem to hurt me either. He can't seem to hit me. What an idiot. Um, I, I, I'm lost. Surely, surely that's all work. Whoa, why are we, why are we consigned to fighting this, this rad scorpion in the void? All right, guys, so what are we calling him? We'll, we'll call him Jeff. If this clip were muted, I'd still be able to tell Jeff is behind me by how every now and then I get nudged forward and then... Ah, 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 it's hurting me! How, how, how's he hurting me? Ah, ah. Ah, you see, the decline in terrain is my ally. He, he must have only been able to hurt me because I was like above him or something. Zero damage! There he goes. He finally leaves. So long, Jeff. I'll think about you always. This is this is a perfectly neurotypical moment. I, I want everyone to acknowledge this. Um, being able to emotionally bond with a rad scorpion on a deep and meaningful level over a sustained period of time, for me, is, is very neurotypical. I have a degree in psychology. It was starting to get to me. I knew I didn't have to stop in Boulder City to progress. But the long road, the moments, the minutes even, the pressing of W and getting stuck in potholes was beginning to wear me thin. I needed something, anything to keep me going. Some content, perhaps some scraps of loot we could sell on the way to New Vegas. Lieutenant Monroe ponders the bongler as we pass. What strange and wondrous secrets the wasteland hides from us all. I cannot pass through the gap in the ruins. I have a mental breakdown. The ground textures are beginning to move like molasses. Like someone has coated the world in vegetable oil. I consider that I might have finally lost my certified neurotypical status. There's, this, there's like this dude just sitting in the bus stop. Like, just sitting there. Fuck the man. Man. Fuck. Man. Poke the... Poke the... Man. Man. Fuck. Man. Man. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, Wise words. <laughs> I walk into the store the cards are in and frighten Jessup. What the hell? I level up speech, melee weapons. Lady Killer completes the bisexual destroyer build. Jessup looks at me funny, so I slash at his feet. He does not care at all. They have this paralyzed guy around back who is merely pretending to be dead. I don't know about you guys, but I've been watching a lot of chiropractor videos lately. Okay, see you later, Buzz. It was good to meet you. The NC Fuck. Man. Fuck. Man. Man. Fuck. I see. Man. I understand. Hope the Fuck. Fuck. Please comment, I understand. <laughs> On my way out of Boulder City, Fuck. this is the big one. Fuck. Fuck. I know the big journey cometh to the big city, the great beyond, the great inborening of my life. I tell Lieutenant Monroe he can firing squad the Khans, I don't care time. man. I travel for five minutes and some dogs kill me until I turn into like this New Vegas mosquito creature. It's all, it's all quite a lot to bear. Some things happen guys, but mostly nothing happens for over, for over two hours. Did I enjoy crossing the desert with the camera clipping into the planet? No. Was it a good use of my time? No. But was this whole endeavor, this whole journey, an intensely spiritually enriching experience in which I could spend the time thinking about my life, reflecting on the small interactions I hadn't thought about, gaining insight into the very essence of my day-to-day -day spirituality? No. No. No, not really. Once I get within the walls, I immediately take a ride into Mick and Ralph's where I'm able to sell heaps of junk and purchase some ammo for the guns I have favorited. As I'm still unable to open the Pip-Boy and see anything, which means no gear changing out. I am one size larger. This all grants you perspective. You really get to feel the homeless people robbing you. Feel the vermin in the street. Witness the children feeling the, the vermin in the street. Get solicited by the atomic wrangler crier. 
Hey, baby. Anyway, this perspective will be short-lived because we're about to become massive. You see, the reason we take 10 luck at the start of the game is because of the casinos in New Vegas. The higher your luck stat, the more likely you're able to get lucky in the casinos. And with the total prize pool of each casino ranging from 5 to 15,000 caps, this should be more than enough to shoot us up in size. This hooker shakes her polygons in my face. Hey, baby. There's more of this waiting for you inside. Inside what, lady? Inside what? This video is supposed to be child friendly. Look, I know being small in this game is basically all disadvantages, but I, I know there's gonna be freaks in the comments. I know some of you are gonna see this and be like, this, this challenge not so bad. I like what I see. Is she picking her nose? Now you might be thinking, best guest, couldn't you have started the fun card games for money in Prim? Couldn't you have prevented your four to five hour journey across from there to here? Ah, uh, yes, well, good question. You see, I uh, forgot I could in Prim. And now you might be thinking, best guest, are you going to lose it all at the slots? Why, yes. Yes, I am. And that's because I don't know how to play this game. I had to ask my Discord how to play this game before I'd start winning because, much like in high school, I had failed to solve for A. Now, before you start commenting, haha, best guess can't count to 21. I can, I've done it before, shut up. Anyways, post-Discord education, I started scooping in some caps. I followed the three basic rules. Double down on 9 or 10. Hit anything below 18. Stay on 18 or above. Easy money. We play until Gamora kicks us out. I go to cash in. I cannot reach the teller, so I have to target him from underneath the floor like like you're supposed to when you're, you're 5'11 like me. I claim my 9,275 caps. I immediately shoot up to scale 1.3, which is 18 steps up from scale 0 0.25, accounting for expenses and ammo, of course. But I only grow to scale 1. That's kind of weird. So I close the game and uninstall a couple mods to see what the issue is. I am now the correct size. This is very exciting, so why stop here? With my newfound swiftness, I sprint to the tops. I look down on the little people. Ring-a-ding, baby. I go to do heaps of gambling fun adult card games. And then it says, a child cannot use that. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but I have a goatee. So I close the game and uninstall a couple more mods to see what the issue is. I play the game. I gather the chips. I am too lucky to be stopped. I'm like Casino Royale, James Bong's all in. Truth is, it was rigged, rigged from the start. Yeah. <laughs> I can count to 21. Okay. I get banned. For... I run upstairs to the teller and cash in my chips. I gain 10,102 caps. I round this down because I am beginning to feel sorry for the game at this point. For Todd who doth birth the old gods, the embryo to his game brio. I gain 20 sizes. I am now player scale 3.2, now accounting for a sip just earlier. Immediately 3.1. <laughs> Shaken, not stirred. I assault Problem, Benny, boys. and judging by the sound effects, Aha. with this one punch, I punch two people at once. I am immense. Unfortunately, if I'm going to win, I need to forego handing over my weapons to the guards and just massacre the place. Fortunately, this is long-awaited therapy. What? I missed! They can't. You see, I'm in stealth. They can't see me from here. They can't see the obelisk in the lobby. This is where it gets tricky. You see, once you hit six foot one, your head goes through the ceiling, which means you can't accomplish basic tasks around the house, okay? Ladies, find yourself a short king, such as shoot people in vats. This is because the bullets are hitting the floor above us. How do I know this? I try a variety of things, such as throwing a frag mine at Benny. This lands on the floor above us. I try shooting him with our subby, but this also hits the ceiling. Okay, I think to myself, how about I just go to the balcony and I could just uh, throw grenades or mines that will just land on him, right? So I try throwing a mine from the floor I don't above. Know what you're doing. I. I was put on this earth to suffer. As an accomplished man who can count to 21, I devise a genius plan by which I throw the mines on the stairs leading down to the lobby area and deliberately grab aggro on Benny to see if I can lure him down. <laughs> Unfortunately, when I try, I cannot loot his body to grab the platinum chip so that I can continue the main story. This effectively softlocks me. Very sad. I resolve to waste a massive amount of time by sort of 
doing nothing while waiting for the bungler to drink from his Vault 13 canteen and shrink to such a size as I'm able to return and loot Chandler Bing's body. I return at 2.7 player scale down from 3.1 but no dice. However, while stimming away the time like a typical neurotypical, I notice that I can loot this one body on the walkway from the recessed floor beneath. This is huge. So I hatch a plan to frag grenade Benny's body to over there so that I can reach it. You dirty cow. Aha. I grab the chip from Benny's body. I level up. Guns. Speech. I take toughness because my various duels with Benny have traumatized me. I cope with how I wasted time going from huge to small before figuring out I could frag grenade Benny's body by listening to Deputy Beagle's audio journal. I wouldn't mind a suit like that. Now I am the dapper gentleman. Caesar sends us his messenger and he gets absolutely bongled in the streets. I make my way to Benny's suite upstairs. Wearing Benny's sexy sleepwear, I speak to Yes Man. I promise to kill an old man in a diaper so I storm his base. Unauthorized user? No. No, surely not. The combat is riveting. Mr. House is all like, oh, oh, and we were all like, yeah! I tell Yes Man we turned Mr. House into Mr. Homeless, and Yes Man instructs us on what we have to do next to stabilize the region. Death bots. And also speak to the other tribes. Because we're against the clock and, and currently only player scale 2.1. We're obviously going to just greet these people and then ignore them. I drink from the pool at the Ultra Lux. I speak to Marjorie at the Ultra Lux. I hang out at the Cannibal Restaurant at the Ultra Lux. What a time to be had. I sprint across the world, strategically weave my way around the Boomer's airstrike, then heroically leap over the border fence. The men at the gate with the RPG launches witness this happening and are totally chill. The boomers seem like really reasonable people. I speak to old Scrotus. She calls me a child. This isn't a term of endearment because she's an ancient Egyptian mummy, but because it is in the law that we are a child from that one time at the tops. Anyway, I ignore her. At now 1.9 player scale, we are still against the clock, but still move at almost double the speed. So we make the most of this by sprinting across the world to go and see the Great Khans, crossing over various dangerous territories such as Fiend's territory, who very clearly shoot me in the dick until I'm deceased. I level up. Speech. Guns. I take the gun trait. I go to the Great Khan Longhouse. I look at this one guy who was furious until Papa Khan wakes up, emerges from his room, and has completely normal interactions with his people. Why'd you come here? Bruh, guy just woke up to have breakfast and he's catching strays in his own home. <laughs> That's whack. I speak to him so that I can ignore him. What a bunch of freaks. The Brotherhood of Steel normally seal you in this room and interrogate you before you can go and enter. But we simply hide behind some crates and then go around the guy who tries to talk to us, bypassing their security entirely. Sadly, their leader speaks to us and puts a no-no splody collar on our neck unless we do a job for them first. The job is to find this one guy snooping around their weird desert wank shack and get him to leave. I tell him I'm going to shove his gun up his ass while he looks at me like some kind of praying mantis wearing a human skin suit. Anyway, I tell him it's dangerous to venture into the big desert wank shacks and he leaves. I travel into the Brotherhood bunker. I speak to Big Mac over here, decide I do not care, and as he walks off, one of his paladins gets scared in the bongler's presence. Understandable, really. I sprint past P. Diddy on the way to Nelson. I break my legs on this one rock, and my body bizarrely spaghettifies. Whack. I observe the various Toddisms in this game. Not even made by Todd, but, you know, definitely influenced by Todd. He never leaves us. I travel to the fort to meet Caesar and to find the hidden bunker to activate our Deathbot army. And while I'm still quite large, time is definitely running out fast. As I keep taking time to observe irrelevant things such as that one guy getting beheaded and that slave carrying stuff just now. Now I know it's been looking pretty breezy so far. But the reality of it was, all these stops to observe things was me just coping. I was starting to feel the pressure. It was beginning to feel like the tides were turning against me. <laughs> I'd throw grenades, and they'd get caught on shit in the terrain, and, and simple tasks were beginning to take a long, long time to complete. And by simple tasks, I am referring to, of course, just this one turret, which is just, why is this continuously happening to me? Even in vats, I'm just blowing myself up. Why? Why does it always end up this way? Why? <laughs> ah, yeah, eat shit. No, there's another one. No, <laughs> no there's another one. <laughs> Player scale 1.4, baby. It's 
It's starting to look pretty bad for... No! No! <laughs> oh! I activate the Securitron army. I tell Caesar where to shove it. Mark my words, you piece of shit. There's this no need the for this language, old man. I level up explosives. I load up on ammo and dynamite from various vendors. I am chased by this homeless guy. I punch the homeless guy. The homeless guy retreats from the bungler to behind this burning bin. He comes back for more. He gives up again. Another homeless guy. Now, significantly smaller, I report back to Yes Man to let him know to absolutely ignore everyone on the list. He tells me about the next quest, which is to protect the NCR president, Mr. Kimball, but like most Australians, I don't care about American politics, so I just, I just ask him to... I just, I just leave him to his doom. The second to last task is to take the override chip to the thingy for some reason. I don't know, I forgot. I'm just a small man in a, in a big body. All, all of this plot is really difficult for me. I arrive at the substation. An NCR trooper approaches. I simply back off and they get confused and run off to the side. Now, the first time I enter, I don't really have a plan. So it all just kind of goes like this. <laughs> the second time I enter, I have a great plan. It doesn't work out. So naturally, the third time I enter, I go in disguised as NCR because they just happen to end up slaughtered by this massive brawl with some Legion troops nearby. Demon Eyes over here doesn't suspect a thing. I do thing. I return to Vegas and our last mission is going to be the Battle of Hoover Dam. Now, because I'm almost ordinary sized again, I'll have some preparatory and beginning to do, and also some gathering of resources and weaponry for the final battle, while I still can loot things. Because once I'm bigger, I won't be able to reach anything on the floor anymore. I clear the Powder Ganger's hideout because I really, really want dynamite for the final battle. I then loot the Coyote Mines and Searchlight North Gold Mine until I end up with 40 plus dynamite. Then I go to the Ultra Lux and gamble. Fun adult card games. Until I've won over 15,000 chips. I hand in the chips. This takes me from 1.5 1.1 player scale all the way to 4.1. I am simply built different, l like a tower. Or, or perhaps a bridge. I crouch to be able to reach the front door of the Ultra Lux. I get the weird message that children cannot use that, but it fades to black and sends me outside, except for some reason the game just sends me outside without my gear. No weapons, nothing. The guards at the front straight up do not return my items. Why? Why does this always happen to me? I end it all and reload my save. I managed to leave the Ultra Lux this time with all my gear. Now, as you all know, the Battle of Hoover Dam is kind of like this big ordeal. But the best part about being the size is we get to do this in a slightly different way. So I fumble my way through the Lucky 38, desperately trying to interact with the elevator. I speak to Yes Man and we are sent to the dam. Now, our strategy here is to simply ignore all the obstacles and sprint with reckless abandon past the hostile Legion forces over this barricade, skipping the entire dam interior section and then get hit by a stray grenade. And you just know that grenade came from a Securitron. We go again. Again. Oh my god, what is happening? Why did I ragdoll across the world? We go again. Oh. This is my strategy now. I'm just going to wait for this to all blow over and then... And then it'll be safe for me to go, right? No, please. There was never a doubt in my mind. Oh my god, what the fuck was that? <laughs> ah, he's punching me in the dick. As the final stretch rolls around, the bongler looks upon his prey from beneath the cliff face. Ordinarily, Lanius is a pretty big intimidating guy who would strike fear to the core of any man. But this is no ordinary man. This is the bongler. And we are like, player scale 3.7. That's probably like 19 feet tall or so. I don't know, do I look like a method testician? An envoy of Vegas. Yet you carry yourself for battle. Get over here, buddy. Oh, oh too slow, buddy. <laughs> yep.
as per tradition, I did some calculations at the end of the successful run, which I will now display over the completely balked ending of New Vegas, to see just how large we had grown, had we not been subjected to the shrinking debilitation of being a thirsty boy. So some quick maths reveals we'd have been around about 9.8 player scale, putting us at roughly the size of those monuments at the California border, or at the right height to be able to look at old Manny Vargas in his eyes from street level, out the front of the Dino Bike gift shop. I cannot imagine the horror behind his eyes, the feeling of helplessness in this moment. Now, I don't ask much of you guys, but if you simply like the video, comment on the video, something about Size King, I don't know, follow me on Instagram, follow me on X, join the Discord, become Patreon, refuel my car with premium diesel, send me the three digits on the back of your card, and the full first and last name and billing address, that would be swell, honey. Have a good day. Mm-hmm.